Greetings, here we are with another delightful video. This time, uh, let's uh, do an, uh, not, a, not a fresh unboxing, but basically an unboxing thing slash uh, overview of Zwad Henda Fantasy Horror RPG Starters, Starter Kit from David D. Fox and James Intercorso. Technically, Inter, uh, James Intercorso, I believe he currently works for MCDM. And uh, for Matt Coville, he wrote the adventure for this uh, starter set. Uh, what comes in this starter set is one rule book for creating characters, one rule book for running the game, Secrets of Swazi featuring length, feature length adventure, six high quality polyhedral dice, a folding game master screen, folding with a po art poster and village map, 13 character profession folios, Nine fortune and misfortune tokens, eighteen siding condition trackers, seventy-two clue, injury, and spell cards. Uh, this MSRP is for twenty-nine ninety-nine, which is actually a really good deal price for it. So, and it comes with a game master screen in there. Uh, please note that uh, I, I keep the wrap on the top so it uh, protects against dust and stuff like that. I do find it interesting that. Uh, they you go with the terminology fantasy horror RPG as opposed to fantasy grimdark RPG. This system is heavily based on the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay system, which is a D100 system uh, that was founded in the War Fantasy Roleplay Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay First Edition. This is the Fourth Edition starter set right here. I've already did this one. You can check back in. Uh, the starter set at unboxing set uh, playlists for that video as well as others uh, let's open this this is a standard size is uh, box it is untreated on the inside with nothing extra on the top cover so <coughs> if you use it as a dice tray there's always a risk risk of uh, moisture or water water landing on the inside you have someone's drinking and uh, damaging the box top and the reason why i bring that up is a lot of times when people are getting into a ttrpg and you buy a starter set to try out a system sometimes you'll get people who don't have dice trays or dice towers to roll their dice into so they will oftentimes uh substitute for the box this is a d100 system so you'll have a d10s and a d10 and you'll roll the d10s and the d10 into equal out 100 uh, typically most uh, d100 systems will have a guide on how to do that there's an extra d10s here for using for advantage mechanics oftentimes in these systems and the d6s are usually used for damage and other abilities it's nice that they come with a basic set of dice. The box is almost entirely full of material. This is not one of those cases where they put a little piece of cardboard uh, filler in the very bottom and uh, you just end up, end up uh, with a lot of dead space uh, looking at you Wizards of the Coast. <coughs> this is a fairly thick saddle bound uh, staple book. There's two staples in it, which is pretty much standard with pretty much the vast majority of the saddle bound staple books. There is a handy dandy key for skills on the back, what you can do and what an attribute is tied to those skills for the system. This is a really good idea to include on the back of the book, as well as say like a dice, uh, a dice instruction or dice, uh, a dice, uh, uh, dice uh, instructions and stuff like that or basic mechanics. Uh, you have this basically a star, technically a star of David, kind of star. Zweihander is uh, German for two-handed, so uh, two-handed, uh, usually used to apply to a great sword of uh, substantial size. It has a fairly nice uh, table of contents, just a basic one though. But it does a really good job uh, for uh, directing you through the book. There's a nice page of artwork. And uh, obviously it's either uh, pencil or ink. 
there is some uh, nice little advice on this and that and here and there. There is a reference on uh, RPG safety tools, which is uh, kind of a here or there. Uh, RPG safety tools can lead to uh, development of uh, conflict in groups. It's one of those funny situations where if you don't have them, you might never have a problem whatsoever. But if you do have them, you might actually result in problems because sometimes... People abuse them or they overly obsess about uh, certain things. But then there's other occasions when it's perfectly fine to have safety tools. Uh, safety tools are one of those weird things where it's uh, the vast majority of them that are online and uh, promoted to people actually have this they take and give kind of relationship. So it can just vary. And usually the people who want to use them are usually the people that are usually the ones that cause the most trouble. Uh, reading this book, there's a nice little guide on reading uh, what you need to look through this. Uh, a final considerations of the book. Oh, uh, another thought on RPG safety tools is typically uh, TTRPGs that promote them heavily are usually... Uh, usually push the boundary into some dangerous areas in conversation. Uh, it's a bit like uh, the parental uh, ex uh, parental advisory uh, label on some music or other things like that. Uh, sometimes, uh, or uh, ratings in uh, ho uh, TV show ratings and stuff, stuff like that. Uh, usually adding such things and having the different classifications oftentimes either creates a filtering effect where it uh, promotes against the more extreme stuff, but also at the same time people will then specifically add in more volatile extreme stuff into a thing because they can attach at a warning that says, uh, please he's, uh, talk with your players, here's, uh, use these items beforehand. Kind of thing. So it's sort of a form of permission to touch boundaries. This chapter is all about playing the game. It's really nice that they have various boxed out sections for Game Master advice. They explain really simple concepts and they have some play examples here for the system itself. They explain how to read a D10 and D10s die. D10s, D10s, D6s, and so forth. <laughs> Yet again, just like on the back side, you have, have the key for the skills. There's also some special mechanics like fail, flip to fail and flip to success, which uh, is interesting in itself. It's like a, a weird case of uh, like advantage or hyper advantage or disadvantage. And explains how to do various mechanics, like such as fortune points and misfortune points, and so forth. You have a nice little D100 table for professions. And then you have uh, the various uh, professions themselves. And just goes over it. And there's just this nice sketch artwork throughout the entire book for various uh, things. The Awakened are basically ob uh, statues or artworks that uh, have basically souls. You kind of notice that they uh, it goes a little more extreme in the art style well, for uh, various types of characters. Uh, making uh, various other races or species less human-like and more like wild beasts or psychopaths, which is interesting in itself. It has an interesting expression in uh, uh, rendering uh, even uh, the more, uh, more gentle species as a little more uh, rough around the edges. Probably the the least uh, terrifying looking is probably the halflings. 
oh, so interestingly enough, there's this really cool thing here where uh, each one of these is basically a, a different variant race East range for the species. So you'll roll on this chart and you get one of these uh, characteristics for your characters. Uh, sometimes they do a really neat thing in here and they include like meta jokes or uh, various other terms like seventh sense, twist of fate and stuff like that, fortune's wheel. But if you keep, if you, uh, for the humans and the awakened, there is pretty predictable things as well as the Aslans, which are basically reptile amphibian people. And the dwarves, herbs, and the elves, elves, you know, the, this really standard theme for each one with uh, the names of the ancestral trait. And then you get to, uh, there, there's the Grendel, which is basically uh, monstrous people. And then you have Halfling, which is, you know, uh, uh, you get the standard. But, and the Ogre, the Ogres. And then you have this really cool theme with the Cebia, Cebria, which has the Mask of Apprehension, the Mask of Contempt, the Mask of Fear, the Mask of Fury, the Mask of Guilt, the Mask of Intrigue, the Mask of Joy, the Mask of Repulsiveness, uh, Mask of Sabotage, Mask of Shame, Mask of Sorrow, and Mask of Surprise. I really like that theming right there. That's really cool in itself. But then you also get cat people. And the, if you look at that very carefully, that is uh, Thundercats. You got uh, Cheetah, you got Panther, and you got Lino right here. And you... And it confirms itself out by reading off of the ancestral traits. You got bad luck, blue blood, cat scratch fever, which is a song, feline orientation, hunter and prey. But then if you get go keep going down, you got all this is in cat theme, mind power, nine lives, saber tooth, and then you get bright sight beyond sight, lionel, survival instincts, thunder cat. And without old bounds, so there's a really neat little cat theme in there for referencing various TV shows, myths of cats, that's and uh, Thundercats, Thundercats. <laughs> so I've always enjoyed stuff like that. You got a nice little distinguishing mark table. Uh, this is personally not a thing that is truly necessary to include in this book uh would have been perfectly fine if they had like a little short list of them and just says like pick one or you can randomly pick choose something like that like white patch fur or something like that at, on your character or birth various types of birthmarks and so forth uh you got birth and dooming uh step step eight for our character creation Everything in here is a random roll table. So people, if you really wanted to, you could just start at the very beginning and just random roll through. The only catch is that there is no random roll to pick. I don't think there's a random roll table for picking out your race. Oh yes, there is, right here, a D100 table right here. Uh, uh, there's the Awakened, the Aslan, the Dwarf, the Elf, the Gnome, the Grendel, Halfling, Ogre, Sebi, and Ubitsi. They don't include human in there, which is weird. Uh, but anyways, I find that weird that they don't include human. But uh, there's a random roll table, and I guess the human is the backup option if you don't like what you random roll. And then you have the, this table right here for uh, uh, your drawbacks. And another table for continues your drawbacks. And it walks you through unlocking new abilities for your character, buying trappings, your equipment for your character, and so forth. It has nice little uh, pencil artwork for, for all the items. And it walks you through everything else, casting magic in the world. Uh, please note that they don't really include anything like spells in here. It basically gives you the rough 
uh, system of coming up with a concept of a spell and how to balance it. And that's pretty much it. They don't really do much beyond that. And then you have the professions that they come with in the box. You have like Atheorist, which is basically an atheist uh, cleric. That's my best uh, estimation of what that is. Is a cleric that's an atheist. You got a barber surgeon, which is basically a, a doctor slash surgeon uh, slash uh, barber. Bounty hunter. A bravo. A charlatan. A chosen. Gambler. Investigator, a jester, a pugilist, a reeve, a sellsword, which is basically a mercenary, and a smuggler. And I'm going to show you through the smuggler here. You have the basic information on the smuggler. The profession traits, uh, talent, uh, talent lights uh, sleeper, and so forth. You got larceny, light sleeper, streetwise, and tra st starting trappings, which is the equipment you start with, and a few other uh, abilities. You got the character sheet on the inside for uh, making your character and leveling them up. And on the back side is your uh, uh, list for all your actions for or that uh, profession. You got misfortune points tape a uh, sheet right here. This punches out and you can, you got fortune points and misfortune points. You got a tracker here that goes on your character sheet that uh, when you uh, move it up and down on your character sheet, it uh, determines uh, where your character is in da uh, level of damage. These actually punch out and mark like, where they are in the process. Then you have a series of cards in sheet, which uh, basically illustrates your moderate injuries information for your moderate injuries on the back side of the cards you uh, pop them apart i have not done that because we have not played this game and then you have a set of serious injury cards and you have grievous injury cards and there's interestingly enough you got way more moderate injury than serious injury but you have more grievous injury than uh, serious injury cards. <coughs> you got spell cards, which has some spells on it. And this is uh, tied into the book. I do believe if you use those cards for casting spells, and you can use them as templates for creating new spells. And that's pretty much it. There's actually multiple of these sheets. And you even have two blank, uh, three blank cards on this one. So you can uh, homebrew your own, own spell sheets. Then you have clue cards. So you can hand them out to your players and show them, hey, this is a clue. For whatever you're going into. Then you have this nice little poster here. Uh, there's way more stuff in here. That contains basically the artwork of the box set in full. And this is a really huge poster. Then you have this stylized map of the region of the world in which your characters are in.
the town. And then on the back side, there's the version with the names on it. So like you look here, you can see names for it. And then on the front, this side, you don't see the name. There's no name for or the places. So I presume one side is for the game master and the other side is for the players. Which is not the most effective way of doing that. Uh, you would split it in two and make it smaller or so uh, people don't have to flip it over. Or the game master doesn't have to pick it up and show people. You got various little maps for inside of buildings things for the adventure. You got the player side and you have the game master side with all the little important information there. And there is multiple of these. And then you have and then you have the game master screen. Uh, this is a huge positive for this system because with it including the game master screen, the, even this really basic one, this helps the game, the brand new game master who wants to know how to run this system to run it more efficiently because the answer to say like a mechanics question of lighting or say a combat condition or something else like that can be found on this screen very quickly and you have nice little artwork on the back side. Uh, be handy if there was prices for items or basic equipment on the back side that's facing towards the players. So the players can say, I'm going to go ahead and buy a potion for five uh, crowns or gold pieces. And uh, I'm at the store and the game master said, yeah, there's like five of those potions. Shins, you can buy a five if you want. You have the game master's book. There is this sheet here, by the way, that has a code for it for Rule 20. I'm covering the code with my hand. But if you're really fast and saw it on the bottom of the camera before I could flip it down, uh, you get it. I will find out if you have, if, uh, someone has sometime in the future. Uh, this is the Game Master Secret Book. This basically covers all the little important things that the Game Master needs to know for running this system, as well as including a bestiary and a, an adventure for the system for the players. So there you go. And it's uh, ver fairly well organized and you also, you also have random roll tables for the various professions that are included in the box and instructions on rolling dice these for uh, deciding the various uh, outcomes of things and then you have the adventure which is actually a pretty good size of the book and you have a nice little collection of creatures on the back side of the book each one having a piece of artwork for them for the adventure and beyond so there you go and you got various other characters that you can interact with or not interact with if you really want to avoid that. Overall, this has to be one of the best overall uh, starter sets or starter kits in TTRPGs. Uh, there's very few starter sets that are better than it. Uh, most of those starter sets that are better than it are say like the Pathfinder starter sets or the starter sets from Chaosium which are also extremely good in themselves. Uh, the Chaosium star sets will oftentimes have handout sheets in them, uh, a solo adventure for the game master to play through, so they learn how to run the system, or how the system feels when you are uh, going through it. So the top tier of the systems are basically the Chaosium star sets, my Call of Cthulhu is not up here because I have that on my table for uh, prepping uh, various adventures for Call of Cthulhu as well as my uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition uh, starter set, which is a uh, beginner box, which is not up here as well because I'm also prepping that sucker as well. I'll get the dice. But anyways, this is a exceedingly top tier Game Master aid for starting to play Zweihander with for your group. Uh, 
the vast majority of the material for Zweihander is setting or theme based. Uh, so if you want to get into Zweihander, you end up buying this set and the core book and stuff like that for the the fantasy grimdark horror setting and then uh that's basically it for it and then you basically have like a pirate themed one or a, uh, a renaissance themed one or a, some other uh one that is basically for a different setting uh, this is one of those systems that kind of went off in the direction of like uh power of the apocalypse or uh Something else I can't remember off the top of my head, where basically you have the basic game, and you got a, some materials for it, a small little pile of stuff for it, and then it's basically all setting theme in books from there on. Oh yeah, I think there's also a sci-fi version of this as well. But uh, overall, I'm gonna say, considering the thirty dollar. $30 price, it comes with a Game Master screen. It comes with tons of player aids and Game Master aids. Uh, this is solidly in that 4.5 or 4.75 star territory. It's literally in the top tier of uh, starter sets and TTRPGs. The price is really good. You get a ton of stuff for it. There's very few TTRPGs that are better than this. Namely, the Chaosium starter sets uh, are on par in quality. A little smaller in size, but a little more densely packed. And the Pathfinder, Starfinder starter sets are equivalent quality to this. Give or take a few things. You get a little more of this and you get, lose a little bit of that, but okay. Uh, so, overall, if you are interested in Zweihander absolutely buy this uh, this is a great value this gives you enough stuff to start up a Zweihander, Zweihander adventure and take the starter set into a small campaign which is awesome if you want more beyond that maybe like your players already played a few of the professions that are in the starter set already after a couple campaigns and I mean there's enough material in this monster I've looked through it that it is easy to build a campaign out of this this starter set that's awesome it's definitely worth uh, looking into the other the, uh, the core rule book and a few other materials for it to expand it out uh, other than that it's it's a 4.5 AEC Z star or product uh, it's not hard it's great price you get a ton of stuff in there. It's uh, two to eight players, one to three hours. But really, the, they give you enough material in here that you can easily expand that one to three hours out from the starter adventure into a mini campaign that might last you like a year or so with the material. You might start uh, after about a year of reusing all the creatures in the bestiary. You might want to get the urge to buy into the system properly. So, there you go. Uh, the nice thing about a D100 system like uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay slash Zweihander or uh, RuneQuest slash Pendragon slash Call of Cthulhu is that those systems are exceedingly adaptable to be exp expanded out into a great depth. If you have some creativity and playfulness is in your scenarios. Uh, you don't get the artificial inflation of uh, extension by leveling up your character. Your character only gets better in skills. So your character doesn't gain a level. You basically gain in your capability of completing a task or skill uh, with random rolls. So your character doesn't become exponentially stronger. They just get better at what they do already in these systems. And eventually your character will die and that's perfectly fine because this is a grim dark fantasy horror game i don't know why they included horror in there it's it's fantasy horror on the box but it's a grim dark or setting system maybe that saying fantasy grim dark rpg is putting it too on the nose that this is a clone 
of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 1st Edition, 2nd Edition, 4th Edition. So, there you go. As I said, if you enjoy this, but you want something uh, in line, uh, slightly off, uh, check this one out. I actually did this video some time back. It's been sitting there for a while, so it uh, developed some dust. This is another extremely good starter set. Uh, for whatever it is, it's the D100 systems that seem... Everyone who makes D100 systems seem to make exceptional starter sets. Where everyone who makes the D&D &D type D20 star, uh, games tend to make the cheap end star sets. Just a weird pattern. But anyways, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I've easily crossed the 500 subscriber mark. Uh, if you enjoy this channel and you want to see more stuff, I cover all kinds of TCRPGs in quick little overviews. I show you what's in boxes, what's in the books, and this and that. I pull stuff out page through it point out weird uh weird little quirks and things or stuff like that or the cool little details and some stuff and you get to learn this is this is this chat this channel is specifically a nibbling channel where you go and you want to know something you want to learn the basics or get an idea of what is this system about or if there's some kind of system like this or something you just flip through the page channels page and then yeah find uh the little uh i i'm in i'm trying to say more and then rush through it so that's not a terribly good thing to do uh simple enough is that i have a variety of stuff on this channel and if you want to find out if something exists in a genre or a type of system you just watch enough of the videos and you end up eventually coming across something like Oh, that looks like a system that my part, uh, my players or my group would really like to play and show them the video, ask them questions about it, and then go from there. Because this is, this channel is basically, the whole point of this channel is like, if you have a one, level one, a level one to level 100 understanding of a system, you have a zero in systems and you just want to find out a variety of systems. To bring you from that level one to uh, level zero to level one to level five very quickly. There's a whole bunch of those videos on this channel to get you in that basic range of levels, and then once you get an understanding of, oh, there's this game called the Mutant Epoch from Outland Arts, or this game called Zweihander, or Fantasies, uh, Fantasies, uh, not, not fantasy. Uh, Star Frontiers or such and such system you then can go there type it out use all the different terms on uh, YouTube find the youtubers that specialize in those systems and you go from the basic understanding of the system to finding people who have more than the basic sick or intermediate knowledge of the system and expanding in from there so this, the whole point of this channel is basically just to get you started into a, uh, a system or even knowing that a system exists. And then from there, you can quickly move on from there. I don't know of any YouTube channels that specifically specialize in Zweihander. I know channels that specifically specialize in, say, RuneQuest, Star Frontiers, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, Starfinder, uh, Werewolf the Apocalypse, uh, Cyberpunk 2020, or Cyberpunk Red, many other systems, Palladium, and so forth. But I don't recall a channel specifically that specializes in Zweihander. So, if someone has a channel that specializes in Zweihander, leave it in the comments below, and uh, I'll check it out. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a delightful day, a nice night, a wonderful weekend, a magnificent month, and see you next time. Ciao.